Now that I've created this plane in between the two acne threads, I need to use it and create a symmetry mate between the jaws and this plane. So I still have the plane selected. I'm going to come over to the assembly tab and choose mate. Then I'll go to the advanced mates and I'll select symmetric. As the two faces to mate symmetric, I'll choose this face and this face. So my pre-selected plane is my symmetry plane. These two faces will be the symmetry faces. I'll accept this. And now when I move the jaws, they move together. They still go through one another. So I need to correct that next. I'm going to close this. There's two mates I need to add to these two jaws to finish them off. I need to stop them from moving through each other. And I need them to move when the screw rotates. So I need a screw mate between one of these and the screw. And then I need to consider how will I stop these from interfering. I also need to know, will the jaw tip hit this face first or will this face stop when it hits here on the screw? So I'm going to move them in. And how can I figure this out? Well, there's several things I can do. But before I do that, what's going to stop this movement is a limit distance mate. Depending on how you created your Acme thread, essentially where you locked up the thread profile to the helix, will determine exactly how long your thread run is. Either if it's a little longer in mine or a little shorter, it's fine. We just need to work with it. So what I want to now do is move these two faces so they touch. To force the touch, I'm going to select this face, rotate around, hold control. I'm going to select this edge, and I'm going to add a coincidence mate that I'll remove later. So now with that coincidence mate, I'm just going to visually check this. Remember, this is just a graphic image to make sure it looks good. And if I come in here, I'm curious if this has interfered. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to make it transparent. With this transparent, what I see is this does interfere. So in my case, these jaws won't meet first to stop movement. The solid jaw here will stop when it runs out of thread here. So I'm going to go back. I no longer need this coincidence mate. I'm just going to delete it. Say yes. I'll move these away a bit. I'll change the transparency of this back. And I'm going to measure this distance. I'm going to evaluate measure distance. And I need to know how far is it from here to here. And I get 0.552. So I need to remember that number. I'll exit measure. And now I'll set up my limit distance mate. Go back to assembly mate. I've made mate window open and I've switched back to the isometric view. The first mate I want to add is a distance mate. I'm going to select distance mate, then select this face, rotate around a bit and select this face. I'm going to make that distance my 0.552. And then I want to make this a limit distance mate. So I'm going to expand and go advanced. And I'm going to make the maximum distance 6 inch. I need to analyze it. So this is just my best guess. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to accept that. I'm going to close the mate window. And now I have my limit distance mate here. And I'm going to see how it functions. So I can drag it out and in. And it stops here. So I need to alter my maximum distance. And to figure out how much to alter it, I'm going to measure from these two faces. So I'll go back to evaluate, select measure, select this face, and then I can select that edge will work. And what I see is the distance here is roughly 5 16 So I'll close that. Now zoom back in on this. I'll double click on my limit distance mate and double click on the values. And I'm going to set the maximum here backspace twice to remove the inch and I'm going to add the 5 16 twice. So now I have it larger. I'm going to rebuild and I'm going to check it. Moves in, moves out, we're good. My last step is to add the screw mate as we've discussed several times in class and I'm showing you. So add your screw mate. Remember you're going to choose an axis and a circular edge and set up the pitch properly. In the next video, we'll look at how we add the collar and the taper pin to this part.
you should be able to find and add your woodruff key without assistance for here.